Let's look back at Storm's past. We've got Katrina, Wilma, more recently, Harvey, Matthew, Florence, and Michael. All of those hurricanes are etched in history. And the reason we name hurricanes and tropical storms has a history behind it. It's a practice that starts during World War II um, and continues to the present. That personification really helps us to better understand and provide clarity to which storm we're talking about. Jay Barnes is an author and hurricane historian, and Dr. Liz Skilton is an assistant professor at the University of Louisiana Lafayette, who literally wrote the book on hurricane naming called Tempest. She says the naming practice in America can be attributed to George Stewart, the author of the 1941 book named Storm. It's a novel about a fictitious storm, uh, which he calls uh, Mariah, a name which he makes up based on meteorological lore. And the book itself becomes really popular right as we're heading into World War II. So they take inspiration from Stewart's book Storm and start naming hurricanes unofficially after female names, much like uh, Stewart had with Mariah. Now, this wasn't actually the first time names were experimented with. A gentleman by the name of Clement Ragg, who was a British philosopher and meteorologist, spent a lot of time in Australia. He started using women's names in the late 1800s. But it wasn't only women's names. He actually experimented with the names of Greek gods and politicians as well. It goes down in the books uh, as a system that caused uh, considerable backlash and is not tried again until this code naming system in the 1940s. You heard correctly, when female names were used during the war, they were used as a secret code. In the 1950s, the use of names was officially adopted by the National Weather Bureau for public use. First, phonetic names were tried, but female only names won out. And feminists start to point out by the end of the 1960s that we're using these expletives to describe storms the same way as we're using them to describe women, and that they're perpetuating certain stereotypes that are very negative in association with women. So they start to suggest that and an alteration to the naming system should take place. Change came in 1978. That's when we went to an alternating male and female naming system. Knowing the history of hurricane names helps you know the history of meteorology. It helps you know how we respond to disasters. It, it helps you know about why those names seem so peculiar and to think a little bit about how they impact us. It's more fascinating than you think because there's a lot that goes into the names themselves.